Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here on The Place for Answers. I want to talk a little bit more today about alopecia areata. Uh, this is part of our series on autoimmune conditions that affect women. It's a really interesting study that came out uh, last year. It was a Taiwanese study that looked at the association between alopecia areata and other, what they call comorbid, autoimmune conditions. Now this is a really important paper because it ties together a lot about what I've been trying to uh, help you understand about how once you have one autoimmune condition it's very easy to get another one because your tolerance to yourself and autoimmunity is broken therefore your whole body is on the menu now just to review alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition that causes hair loss now it, the hair loss can occur in a couple different ways it could be like solitary patches it could be more like diffuse bands of hair which is what I see a lot in my practice or rarely it can be the entire scalp and that's called alopecia totalis. Now the reason we talk about alopecia is a lot of people have this in their history. You know, I see a lot of women with Hashimoto's and other autoimmune conditions, just had one a couple days ago as a matter of fact, uh, showing up with endometriosis and in her history when she was like nine years old she had alopecia areata. Now this automatically tells us, hey, she's got a history of autoimmunity, maybe what's going on with her now is related to this autoimmune problem. She also has a brother with type 1 diabetes, which is also another autoimmune condition. So very easily you can see how once you start looking for it, uh, and you have to look for it sometimes, these things start popping up. Now what this uh, study looked at is the association uh, between alopecia areata and other conditions like Hashimoto's, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, uh, psoriasis. Now this study was conducted in Taiwan. It's a really cool study because they took 4,334 patients with alopecia areata and they con they uh, compared them to over 780,000 uh, control that that's a really good statistical number and this is the most interesting part I'm gonna I'm gonna read this to you what they found is if the onset of alopecia areata w was under 10 years of age that was associated with atopic dermatitis and lupus okay now it doesn't mean they had lupus when they were you know nine years old it means that they were at risk for developing lupus later if at the onset was under 10 years of age. Between 11 and 20 years of age, there was an association between psoriasis, which is an autoimmune condition, and rheumatoid arthritis. Now, once again, it didn't mean that they had all of that at the same time, but there are risk, uh, there's association with them developing it later in life. Why? Because the tolerance to their self has already been broken. It's like a tadpoo. And uh, their immune system looks for other tissues to attack and will, uh, quite frankly, unless something's done about it. Now, the last thing is, uh, for patients that were over 60 years of age that developed alopecia areata, there was a strong association between that and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what do we know? Exactly what we've always known for the doctors that have been paying attention. Once you develop an autoimmune condition, it doesn't matter if it's when you're a 7-year-old or 8-year-old or whether it seemed to be self-limiting or not. Once you develop an autoimmune condition at one time, you're probably going to get another one unless you do the right things. Now, the right things, that's a lot of stuff for, for another time. Uh, but there but there are things you can do. There's really no medication for these things except for some fairly nasty immune system modulation. But there are natural things you can do uh, that can really slow this down and prevent um, other attacks from happening. Now, what the study shows as a conclusion, what I thought was great, it says, look, if someone's got alopecia areata doctors who are reading this scientific study, you need to screen them for other autoimmune conditions. And I applaud these authors for doing that, for saying, doctors, you need to check for these things. But here's what i got to tell you. Most doctors that read that study probably aren't going to start screening other people for it. They're just probably not going to do that. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is uh, a lot of doctors aren't even going to read this thing, frankly. And uh, the ones that do, you know, they just don't do it. They don't put into action a lot of what they read. And it's, it's sad because they could be helping a lot of people. Now, the third thing is, they don't know what to do for a lot of this stuff anyway. They really only got uh, one tool for a lot of these conditions and uh, frankly, for example, in Hashimoto's, if you've got hypothyroidism and they determine that Hashimoto's is causing it, they don't change their treatment. You're just going to get replacement hormones, which is why most people uh, that I see have been taking replacement hormones, they've got Hashimoto's, and they really don't feel better because the hormones aren't really the solution to the problem. It's the immune system that's the solution. So I wanted to follow up with this on part two to let you know that if you've got alopecia areata in your history and you're feeling bad now, there's chances are you get another autoimmune problem, another tissue that's being attacked. They're all really the same problem. They just get different names based on what's being attacked, be it vitiligo or rheumatoid or lupus. 
it's all the same problem. And what you want to do is find someone that understands um, how to take a functional approach to these autoimmune problems and how to help uh, address your immune system. So I hope that helps.